Should be all set, Alec. All righty. So welcome everyone to the April 20th, 2021 meeting of the Edgemont Board of Education. Uh, apologies for starting a little bit late. Do I have a motion to bring us out of exec into public session? Judy, second Jennifer. All in favor? We are in public session. Welcome one and all. Um, all right, so tonight we do have um, treasurer's report for January. So do I have a motion to approve? Uh, Marikita, second Judy, all in favor? We are approved. And with that, um, I will turn it over to Victoria. Yes, thank you, Alec. Good evening, everyone. So great to see so many faces here with us this evening. And we also have some exciting recognitions of community. And I'd like to begin by turning it over to Jennifer Allen, principal at Greenville School. Good evening, everyone. Um, I am very pleased to um, uh, share some wonderful news about some recognition of some of our Greenville students. Um, Senator Andrea Stewart-Cousins, who actually um, visited us last week with our third and fourth graders, which was wonderful. Um, she sponsors an I Have a Dream video project for students to reflect upon and celebrate Martin Luther King Day and Dr. King's contributions and accomplishments. We're thrilled to have had a very large number of Greenville students who participated in this activity for which they have been recognized by Senator Stuart Cousins who sent certificates that will be given to each participant. Um, she uh, let us know that there were a hundred videos produced and about a third of them came from Greenville students. So that was um, really remarkable. Um, you can see the videos on her Facebook page, which is Andrea Dutz, uh, at Andrea Dutz Stewart Cousins. Um, we are proud, so proud of our students for enthusiastically participating in this worthwhile project. The participants were Abdullah Ahmed, Yash Aurora, Nev Bander, Madeline Chen, Christopher Costamiris, Mason Cruz, Nicholas Demopoulos, Sienna Gojka, Jason He, Vivian Holland, Connor Jordan, Samuel Kang, Ethan Krasselnik, Max Krasselnik, Chloe Krocek, Lucas Kumar, Braden Liu, Evan Mack, Anya Pathak, George Petrie, Alice Kwan, Rohan Rao, Vera Rojas, Marcus Song, Joya Sun, Alan Wang, and Ben Wexel. So congratulations to all of our participants. Thank you, Jen, that's wonderful. Um, congratulations to all the students. That's a really wonderful project and nice to get that recognition. Yes, we're um, also thrilled to have a uh, recognition of outstanding citizenship uh, called Jewel of the Heart for Aaron Larratt at Edgemont Junior Senior High School. And Alec, do you want to I do. Aaron? I absolutely do. Um, I, I'll give you a chance at the end, Aaron, but you want to just unmute and say hello real quick so people can see your face when I start talking about you and embarrassing you. Yes, <laughs> Great, thank you. So let me just back up a little bit because we, we haven't had one of those in a little while. So um, I'd like to just refresh everyone's memory and in some cases maybe this this may be the first time you've heard this explanation before but this this recognition came about um, a few years ago um, it was created by the then board president Jennifer Darger and her rationale for putting this in place was that Edgemont has always done a nice job of recognizing students for other kinds of accomplishments um, you know their academic competitions, they get recognized. If they're sports competitions, they get recognized. There, there are a number of ways that students can be, you know, uh, will get mentioned and you know, appreciated by the community. But there's never been anything that really sort of acknowledges students for the kinds of uh, just behaviors and character that we like to see out of our students. So the idea was to, when a 
an administrator or a teacher or a coach or someone who works with the students sees an action or behavior they really think they want to call attention to. This is a mechanism for them to propose to the board why they think that student should be recognized. And then if the board agrees, then um, we have a black cat going across the screen there. All right. <laughs> no, the, the board can then um, take that step to, to give recognition to the student. So in this case, um, uh, Aaron was um, nominated by um, Liz Scutt. And this is in her role, I believe, as uh, the advisor to the Builders Club. And so they've been doing, um, well, they do a lot of things, but in this particular case, they were doing a fundraiser for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And they've been having, you know, and they'd set a goal, sorry, the students set a goal of $1,200. And donations have been coming in and then moving along, but then she noticed that the total suddenly jumped up by $280. And she said, oh, this is really wonderful. Somebody's kicked in a big donation here. So she went to start looking at them and um, she saw that it was, um, Aaron, and by the way, Aaron is a, a sophomore at EHS. Um, and um, she also knew that um, uh, he'd been donating to some other projects as well, because he had come to her about, you know, what are places he could donate. And, um, and she asked him, you know, how did he come to the money to um, donate? And he explained to her that he makes and sells melodies for other musicians to use in her pieces. So that's a way that... Uh, he generates the money. Um, and he asked then if he could donate more to help um, help them get past their goal. And she said, absolutely. Um, and the next thing she knew, um, he gave another $1,208, which pushed them all the way to over $2,200. So individually, he gave almost $1,500 of money that he had earned on his own. So um, I, you know, we wholeheartedly um, agree with Liz in that this is tremendous, you know, behavior and, you know, something that really deserves recognition. So we are um, very happy to um, award Aaron the Jewel of the Heart Award. I assume Kyle or someone will make sure that um, he gets, normally we would have him walk down to the front of the LGI and hand him a certificate. So I'm sure we have a certificate and we'll make sure that it we gets will. to him um, hopefully tomorrow. But um, if we could all give a round of a virtual applause for, for Aaron. Um, and yes, I, I congratulations, not, Aaron. We will have your certificate for you tomorrow. And um, I will not force you to be on the spot, but if you wanted to just say anything, Aaron, we would be very happy to, to hear from you. Well, I, I appreciate it a lot. It's definitely cool to like have this recognition. And I'm just glad I was I was able to take something that I just enjoy doing on a regular basis, you know, just for fun and be able to make something out of it that made like a bigger difference than just having fun by myself. Well, that's a very noble. Also making all your Thank all you. your music teachers very proud, Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So thank you again. Another round of applause. Applause for Aaron. Congratulations. Okay, I think we have uh, one more item on the... Yes, so um, we're, we're excited to celebrate all our uh, teachers who will be getting their tenure appointments this evening, but I'd also like to take an opportunity to recognize another cause for celebration. Michael Curtin, Director of Curriculum and, and Instruction, earned his doctoral degree in Educational Leadership Administration and Policy from Fordham University. Mike's position in Edgemont is directly focused on teaching and learning. He's charged with implementing curriculum and practices that increase learning for all students. This doctorate is a manifestation of Mike's position for and a connection to educational research and growth. And as that connection and research have helped Mike to broaden and to deepen his network as well. So through this work, he's got this broad network of educational leaders to call upon for collaborations. So congratulations, Dr. Curtin, for being our lead learner and for modeling lifelong learning for the students and for all of us. Congratulations. Congratulations, Mike. 
Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you to the board and to my administrative colleagues and to the teachers who teach me every day and especially the students at Edgemont. I really appreciate the recognition and um, thank you again. Okay. And now on to, I think not missing anything, right? On to the superintendent's report, yes, uh, recognition of teachers. Oh, sorry, sorry. Gift. a very important gift. Um, I'd like to, before we get to the recognition of teachers, I'd like to ask the board's approval of a generous gift from the PTSA, $5,000 for the uh, requested for the support of the senior forum trip. Um, do I have a motion to approve? Monica, second Jennifer, all in favor? That is approved and we, we are always so appreciative of these kinds of gifts. Um, it allows us to do things that we might not otherwise be able to, to do with our regular budget. Um, just looking at this particular one, I'm appreciative not only of the gift, but of the fact that we are now in a position that we can actually have someone sponsor this trip um, because they wouldn't have, couldn't have done this last year. So it, it's wonderful that we're in a position to let the seniors do this. And uh, so thankful to the PTSA for, for underwriting it so they can have a little bit of a more normalcy at the, the end of their senior year. So thank you so much. And now um, on to us, our celebration of teachers. Um, tonight we celebrate the tenure appointment of seven teachers. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the law regulating tenure as it's often a misunderstood aspect of the teaching profession. Tenure laws came about in New York back in 1917 for teachers working specifically in New York City. By 1945, under Governor Dewey, all teachers across the state of New York benefited from tenure laws. The legislative intent of tenure was to avoid political upheaval in school districts and protect the integrity of education. Tenure signifies the end of a full-time teacher or full-time administrator's probationary period. During that probationary period, teachers or administrators can be terminated at any time and for any reason. After tenure, there needs to be a just cause and a due process. For first-time tenure in the state, it takes four probationary years to earn it. And for second-time tenure in the state in the same certification area, it takes three years. So tonight is a celebration of a milestone. That milestone is about being successful in Edgemont. It's about wanting to make a positive difference in the lives of our students. It's about hard work, initiative, and being a collaborative team player. I can't think of a more challenging time uh, during which to complete a probationary period. We believe in the work you are doing and we want you to continue that work. This evening, Director of Technology Paul Garafano and Principals Eve Forestine, Jennifer Allen and Kyle Hosier will speak about the educators receiving their tenure appointments this evening. And now I'd like to turn it over to Paul Garafano. Thank you, Victoria. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Um, we, myself and the principals, um, we have some uh, pictures we're gonna show while we're speaking. Um, so I'll share my screen in a moment, but I want to uh, welcome everybody, especially our, our tenured teachers. Um, it's my honor to speak this evening on behalf of Andrea Nash um, in celebration of her tenure in Edgemont and welcome all of her friends and her family and her colleagues who have joined us in this celebration. Um, I brag about Andrea every chance I can get. So I told her <laughs> last week, I'm really gonna pile it on tonight. So let me go ahead and uh, I'll share my screen here. Okay, can everybody, can somebody let me know they can see that? Yep, all good. Great. If you don't know Andrea or the position she holds, uh, she's Edgemont's K-12 Educational te Technology Specialist. This is a very unique teaching position in that Andrea is responsible for the integration 
of technology across all of the curriculum and in collaboration with all of our faculty and all of our students. Um, when you think about what that entails and the knowledge base that, that she possesses and the personalities and the experience level that she navigates on a daily basis, it's a real testament to the high level of professionalism that she brings to the district. So in 2017, Andrea became our first K-12 ed tech specialist. She had the monumental task of earning the trust and respect of the entire faculty while simultaneously asking them to get out of their comfort zones and move instruction into the 21st century. Well, Andrea wasted no time in doing what she does best, collaborating with teachers and students and integrating herself into the classrooms as a colleague and a co-facilitator. On any given day in Edgemont, you can find Andrea working with kindergarten students on their digital literacy skills, uh, or in a sixth grade classroom, facilitating student-created podcasts on Mesopotamia, or working with high school students in the Phaedrus program, helping them make documentaries or building websites for research projects. Andrea is, an, is also an integral uh, member of our technology department. She's a leader on um, several related committees, runs professional development courses all year long, and has built a vast library of online instructional technology resources that have become so pivotal over the past year. But most importantly, Andrea supports everyone with a smile. Andrea is a great listener and a great communicator who is responsive to change and cares deeply about students. And to that end, let's hear what some of her colleagues have to say about Andrea. Andrea Nash is a facilitator of the best kind. She offers gentle suggestions on ways to improve more traditional practices with new technology software programs, regardless of the grade level, which always amazes me, said one colleague. Another said, I enjoy collaborating and teaching with Andrea because she's so flexible and open to new ideas. She's she has a tremendous amount of knowledge, not only about technology, but also about working with different age groups and students of varying learning styles. And finally, another colleague said, not only does Andrea take the time to plan with teachers and aim them in learning new technology, but she also comes in to co-teach and makes relationships with all of the kids. Whenever the students hear Miss Nash is coming, they are completely ecstatic. I look forward to Andrea's continued growth and leadership in Edgemont. She should be so proud of all of her accomplishments thus far. Please join me as we celebrate her tenure as a member of the Edgemont faculty. Andrea, congratulations. Congratulations, Andrea. That's wonderful. Okay, so I will now turn it over to Jen Allen, uh, Greenville Elementary Principal. Jen, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Thank you. Huh? Sharing? And there we go. All right, so it's my pleasure to speak on behalf of Kelly Blair this evening. Kelly began her career in Greenville in the fall of 2016 as a part-time AIS, AIS math teacher and quickly connected with colleagues and students through her warmth, humor, high energy, and unique ability to motivate kids. This last quality might be due to her having been a champion college field hockey and lacrosse player and her experience as a college level lacrosse coach. As we got to know her better, we saw her humility. She was relatively new to the profession and didn't hesitate to acknowledge what she didn't know and to work collaboratively to learn and grow. She was eager and hungry to learn and to work more deeply with students. 
Over the course of that first year, we began to recognize her potential to be a strong full-time teacher. So when a vacancy occurred, we felt confident about moving Kelly into a homeroom position. As Kelly settled into her new role as a fourth grade homeroom teacher, she continued to work with her grade level colleagues and others to build her teaching capacity. And we saw her confidence and skill set grow too. Our confidence in Kelly grew too, so much so that after a couple of years, we assigned Kelly to be the general education fourth grade ICT teacher. And that means working with a co-teacher to provide strong instruction for general education and classified students in her class. The partnership of Kelly and her co-teacher has been amazing and her students have benefited enormously from her dedication, resourcefulness and strong collaboration with her colleagues. Kelly has found her calling, which is why she then asked to remain the ICT teacher. So the skills that she's been developing and her strength as a collaborator can continue to serve her students' needs. Some of Kelly's strongest, strongest qualities include her recognition that a student-centered classroom where student voice and choice are valued yields the best learning outcomes and empowers her students. Being a team player, a great collaborator and always adaptable. Regularly communicating with her parents, sharing the good days, her students' needs, their kind gestures and what's going on in the class and the grade. Her innovative use of technology and other resources that engage all her students and make learning fun and her very positive attitude and ability to connect with her students and provide them with just the right words of support and comfort. Kelly's colleagues love working with her and they love her. And you can see by the picture how her kids feel about her. They have said that it is a pleasure to work with her and she is a great team player and the go-to for lessons that they can use and for ways to make lessons fun and interesting for students. They described her kind and enthusiastic nature and the way she gets kids excited about learning. They talked about her spirit. Kelly is a very enthusiastic participant in every spirit and pajama day, famous for her unicorn onesie. And she is an enthusiastic technology user and STEAM proponent who helps her colleagues by teaching them about new programs and activities that they can use with their students. It is really a remarkable thing to see a teacher who is relatively new to the profession evolve and grow into a confident teacher who is able to support and nurture others. We are so pleased to have been on this journey with Kelly and tonight we congratulate her on receiving tenure. Congratulations. And hey Kelly. And now. Thank you, Jen. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, my friend. And next, very excited to talk about Danielle LaMonica, who has company tonight as she sits there listening to these words. So Danielle joined the Greenville faculty in September 2017, having begun her career in Edgemont as a leave replacement teacher at Sealy. We needed a teacher the following year, and we heard that there was a fabulous leave replacement teacher at Sealy. So we went over to take a look and see, meet her and see how she was. So I sat in on a class with Miss Ferrara, came over and sat in and watched Danielle teaching. And we both remember being struck by a feeling that we do not experience that often. We had this sense of awe that someone so young with so little experience could feel like a veteran teacher with decades of experience. Danielle's expertise, confidence, command of the curriculum, deep understanding of children and how they learn and feel, her compassion and empathy were at the level that one typically sees in veteran teachers. We couldn't believe it given how young she is, which you can see by her youthful glow. <laughs> Danielle became a second grade teacher at Greenville and watching her way with the kids, her use of technology, her collaborative skills, her strong work ethic, and her skill at differentiating instruction, differentiating instruction made her the easy choice to become the second grade ICT general educator, a position she has been in for three years. 
Her expert differentiation, along with kindness, warmth, humor, compassion, dedication, and a strong commitment to student-centered learning have made Danielle the highly successful teacher that she is. Some of her strongest qualities include her equal commitment to all of her students and their needs, whether they're academic or social emotional, her high expectations of her students. She doesn't let them get away with anything. Her student-centered and differentiated instruction that is responsive to the interests of her students, the very strong classroom community that she has built, her humility and her dedication to professional development and growth, her openness to feedback and her commitment to being a lifelong learner and her strong collaborative relationships and love of sharing ideas. Lastly, her creative and effective use of technology. Danielle's colleagues note her kindness and warmth and commitment to her students' growth, her advocacy for her students and for differentiating instructions, her exponential patience, adaptability, engaging personality and teaching style, her humor and her endless positivity. Nothing gets her down. Danielle is greatly respected and loved by her peers and families, and we are incredibly grateful to have her on our team. So we congratulate her tonight on receiving tenure and on the recent birth of her son, Vincent, in February, who joined her tonight to congratulate his mama. So congratulations to Danielle. Thanks so much, Jen. My pleasure. And we have one more recipient at Greenville that we're very, very pleased to discuss tonight. And that is Sonia Sheridan. So Sonia began her ESL career in Edgemont at the junior senior high school and then came to Greenville in 2018. Over the past few years, Sonia has had the daunting task of having to learn the entire elementary curriculum as she works with students in all seven grade levels and supports her students learning in every curricular area. In addition to teaching students all day, Sonia spends a lot of time reviewing material, meeting with colleagues, asking questions and acquiring curricular knowledge so that she can do this as effectively as possible. She has developed successful relationships with our teachers and has shared her knowledge and absorbed knowledge from them so that she can support her students' growth. Sonia is happy to be supporting her students and has meshed very well with the entire support team. She works closely with many specialists and is very collegial and collaborative with them. She sees her role as supporting the work of her colleagues and ensuring that they balance each other and work in concert with one another. A very patient, calming, and friendly person, Sonia puts her students at ease, which is so important, as many of them speak little to no English and have only recently moved to this country. Sonia supports their social, emotional, and academic needs as they adjust and acclimate to their new environments. Some of Sonia's strongest qualities include her responsiveness to the needs of the whole child, considering the social, emotional, academic, and cultural needs of each child and family her reflectiveness about her practice, her adaptability, her wealth of knowledge about how to best reach students, and her responsiveness to all communication from parents and colleagues. Sonia's colleagues describe her, her creative ways in helping students to expand their language growth and her strong ability to collaborate and develop successful ways to differentiate. She understands that ESL is not just about what happens in the room and that ESL students often need a lot of additional support. Her colleagues describe her as 100% there for her students and families and notes that she understands and appreciates that the nature of being an ESL teacher is to be the support and guide, not just for the ESL students, but also for their families. So she works very closely with them to support them and their children. Sonia's dedication, patience, kindness, and ability to get to know her students really well to provide highly individualized support are what make her successful with children of all ages and all levels of language when they enter our school. Her collaboration with all of our teachers to support her students plays a large and important role in their success in the classroom setting. So we are very happy to have Sonia as a member of our support team and we congratulate her tonight for earning tenure. Thank you. And now um, I am going to pass it off to Eve Feuerstein. Hi, everyone. 
um, I have to say, this is one of my favorite nights. It's so nice to hear about everyone. And I have the pleasure of speaking about two Sealy Place faculty members um, this evening. I'm gonna start by speaking about Jennifer Coppola. Smart, forward thinking, inclusive, and happy are a few descriptors I can use for Jennifer Coppola, who I have the pleasure of speaking about this evening. Before I begin, I want to welcome Jennifer's partner, Danny, and her parents who are logging in tonight to watch this live on YouTube. One small piece of exciting news is that Jennifer and Danny are expecting their first child in July, and we are so happy for them. Jennifer has wanted to be a teacher since she was a young child. Growing up in Harrison, New York, Jennifer had great teachers and great experiences in school. When she was in elementary school, she was a struggling reader and it was her teachers who taught her not only how to read, but also who gave her the gift of learning to love to read. Jennifer is a graduate of Iona College and began her career working with third grade students in the Bronx. After working in the Bronx for a few, a few years, she was looking for an opportunity to grow as a teacher and making a very smart move, decided she should move to Palm Beach, Florida. So in Florida, she had the chance to teach special education and general education. After nine years of living in the warmth, she decided it was time to come home and return to Westchester. Ms. Coppola was mid move in 2017 when she was interviewed and offered the job at Sealy Place. Now, four years later, Ms. Coppola has taught fourth and sixth grade at Sealy. During her time at Sealy, Ms. Coppola, or Jennifer, sorry, has worked to instill in her students a love of learning and a love of reading. Even in the height of the pandemic, she was organizing virtual book clubs for her students. In typical class times, watching her walk around the classroom and work with book clubs and check in with the students is something truly unbelievable to observe. It is amazing to me how during a typical reading class, she can check in with each student and remember where they left off last time and discuss with them where they are going forward. It's a real skill and Ms. Coppola or Jennifer does it with ease. Um, and, but it is her as a teacher that wants to connect and inspire and her as a teacher that wants to continue to grow, which is why she continues to take summer institutes at Teachers College every summer. Jennifer's colleagues shared the following about her. I just wanna say that Jennifer was a tremendous part of our team when she started at Sealy four years ago. She was always a team player, brought great new ideas to our curriculum and listened and learned the culture of Sealy during her first year. I was her mentor and we always had wonderful conversations about how to merge what she had done with TC into our reading workshop. I truly loved working with her and hope to have her back on our grade level team someday. Another teacher shared, and this is amazing. I mean, so often teachers move through their day with little time to slow down. It is these small moments of time when many appreciate that a colleague, that as a colleague, you can quickly run an idea or by a friend who is ready to stop what they're doing and just listen. Jen Coppola is that person. So to you, Jennifer Coppola, may you celebrate with decorating, organizing, walking with Marley, hiking, or doing whatever makes you happy. And like you, we are so happy for you to call Sealy your forever school. We are so proud. And I see one of your students on, Elise Blomberg. So congratulations to Jennifer. Thank you, Eve. Thank you, Jennifer. And I'm sorry for calling you Miss Capola the whole time. <laughs> I'm just used to it. And now I will speak about Miss April Waltersdorf. Talented, motivated, and kind are a few words I can use for April Waltersdorf, who I also have the pleasure of speaking about tonight. Before I begin, I want to welcome April's family and loved, on, loved ones who are logging in tonight to watch this live on YouTube. Thank you for sharing April with us each day. She truly brings joy and spirit to Sealy Place. April grew up in Somers and wanted to be a music teacher since she was a teenager. When she was growing up, she was involved with chorus, theater, and dance. She was a member of the Somers High School Chorus and knew that one day she wanted to lead her own choral group. She went to Syracuse University with an intent to study music education. While at Syracuse, she was a member and director of one of the school's acapella groups. 
In addition, she was also a soprano in an internationally acclaimed choir. April remained at Syracuse for her graduate work, and this is when her career as a teacher really began. Her, her first teaching job was at Putnam Valley Middle School, and then she went to Coleman Hill Elementary School. She came to Sealy Place in 2017 as a leave replacement, and then took over the role as Sealy Place music and chorus teacher. She's continued with many of the Sealy Place traditions, like the holiday sing-along, and has even created new traditions, like the Flag Day celebration, where our youngest students have the chance to perform. During her performances, she likes to include student voice and choice through the choral arrangements and musical accompaniment. One of my favorite lessons is when, Miss, is when April teaches rhythm using these huge Home Depot tubs. It is absolutely fantastic. Outside of school, she's involved with children's theater. Um, she works with the Children's Sandbox and the White Plains Performing Arts Center. Her passion is theater and music, and she's even brought that passion to our K-2 students by offering them a musical theater course. Our Sealy teachers shared the following. I will say that my students last year expressed how music was their favorite special because they love to sing. I will also recognize April as not only being a fun, energetic, and collegial member of the faculty, but she has a gorgeous singing voice. Someone else shared, I love April and miss the opportunities we had when we were normal to play guitar and sing music together. She brings wonderful energy to kindergarten and she brought excitement to our in-class lessons. We are so fortunate to have her as one of our specials team at CLE. She brings a wealth of experience with musicals, the dramatic arts and performance. So to you, April, may you celebrate by enjoying time at the lake and singing from the top of your lungs. And I would appreciate being part of the show or really watching the show. So to you, April, congratulations. We are so proud of you. Thank you, Eve. Thank you, April. And now I'm gonna pass it over to Kyle Hosier. Thank you, Eve, and congratulations to everyone that is being recognized for tenure this evening. I am thrilled to speak on behalf of Gina Kim and to recommend her to the board for tenure this evening. Gina finds herself in the unique position of being recommended for tenure in Edgemont for a second time. As you may know, Gina was tenured uh, in special education in Edgemont earlier in her career. Gina also has a passion for science, so she made the decision to start her career anew as a science teacher. She gave up her tenure because she cared so much about science and she wanted to career, uh, pursue her teaching career in science. Just so you know, that almost never happens. And so that says a lot about Gina's passion for science. Since making that decision, Gina has been a valuable resource for her students and to our science department. Gina has taught science eight and living environment at the junior senior high school. When a change was made to our science sequence, we needed to revamp our living environment curriculum. Gina worked closely with Sharon Bayless, our science department chair, to redesign the course. They created common assessments and aligned instructional strategies to ensure students had a similar experience across all of our living environment classes. I asked Sharon Bayless for some comments about Gina and she shared the following. Gina has been a wonderful addition to our department. We have worked closely over the past two years implementing the new living environment program. Not only does Gina have a deep knowledge of biology, but she also has a strong understanding of her students. Students have said that she is supportive, helpful, flexible, and fair. She has contributed many ideas and activities to create a program that stimulates students to become active in the learning process. Gina is also willing to support students in and out of the classroom. When we needed a science Olympiad advisor, Gina stepped forward. And under her guidance, the team recently qualified for the New York State Tournament. I look forward to Gina Kim having a long tenure in Edgemont, wherein I have no doubt that she will have great success. Congratulations to Gina, her husband, Sejun, her daughter, Rebecca, and her son, Darren. Congratulations, Gina. Thank you so much, Kyle. Congratulations to everyone who's getting tenure tonight. Um, I guess we should take 
no, cake bowl. Yeah, I, I don't know what a virtual cake would look like, but usually mm -hmm. at this time we would take a break and we would get to chat with family members and teachers mm -hmm. and enjoy some cake. But um, I hope you all have a special treat mm -hmm. at home and uh, treat yourselves uh, to um, your probationary time here in Edgemont. And tonight, it's always great to, to celebrate um, at one particular event, but when you think of the time, the effort, and so much that you put into, into your careers here, and we're just so proud. So congratulations, everyone. Congratulations to all. We're very lucky to have you all. I just wanted to say um, a quick thank you. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to work and grow here. And it's an honor to be a part of the Edgemont community and work alongside fantastic colleagues and community members. So I just wanted to say thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Glad you're here, Kelly. Great. Um, so everyone is, of course, welcome to stay after your cake or whatever form your cake might take this evening. Uh, welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. and. Um, we're going to move on to the budget that makes this all possible. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it over to, to Brian for um, just a, some, some words to, to move us toward the final budget adoption. Right. Thanks, Victoria. Again, always hard to follow the, uh, the celebratory aspects of it with discussion of numbers, but um, as we know, an important part of, of the process and tonight is certainly um, getting to one of the critical moments that we've been speaking about through our, our budget development process that we started back in our January meetings. Uh, tonight, um, you, the board, will be voting on an approved budget um, that comes to a full dollar value of $65,251,389. Uh, for those who are, are viewing virtually, the document that you see projected on my screen right now, the revenue and tax rate projection, uh, which is usually available for distribution when we're in person, is available on board docs on the public side right now. And this will be one of the important documents that will be shared um, with all with the final package um, of the public budget. Um, this evening, the, the board will um, vote on the adoption of that budget, and in two, uh, three weeks' time, so on May 11th, we'll have our budget hearing um, at our Board of Education meeting, and then the subsequent week on Tuesday, May 18th, uh, will be the actual vote. Um, we've outlined many different times and tried to separate as much as we can, but there'll be um, a couple of critical votes um, going on that evening, the first of which is a vote on the school budget, um, and then there'll be two separate propositions um, related to our bond projects. Uh, the first of which, um, or the second of which being contingent upon the first. And then lastly on the ballot, you'll, you'll be seeing um, school board nomination uh, votes as you typically would. In a coming uh, board meeting, we will be sharing an example of what the uh, ballot will look like so that everybody's familiar with um, the structure given that we are including the bond vote at the same time of the budget vote, even though they are two very different things and, and um, requesting funding for different time periods. Uh, the budget being next year's um, school um, expenses and, and then the bond vote really relating to the 23-24 year as its first um, year where we'll start to see the incurred expenses associated with that. Over the last uh, few weeks, we've made some presentations as it relates to our administrative proposal. Most recently, uh, last week at our, our Board of Education meeting, uh, where we made some uh, revisions and, and revised our totals based on the incoming state aid that's been projected to us, uh, which has been in the favorable um, category, which, which is really nice. We thought this evening, uh, short of going into any additional details, we'd highlight the key aspects of that and provide opportunities for the board to ask any questions and to see if any community questions have come through on the um, forum that we provide. I already identified the total budget of 65,251,389. Uh, that represents itself as a 2.47% budget to budget increase and an anticipated tax rate increase of 2.21% for next year. The um, property tax levy of 55,984,120 comes in at the maximum allowable tax cap um, and does not exceed uh, that value. And so does not require any additional um, vote than a super major, uh, sorry, than a typical majority vote um, on May 18th. 
Alec, with that, I'll pass it back for any questions, clarifications uh, that have come up over the last week from the board and, and see if there are any questions from the community. Great. Thank you, Brian. Um, before I go to the board and if you could take down the things, so, oh, my secret space, it's never mind. Um, just remind if there's anybody watching who wants to put in a question, the um, document that took you to this meeting as always has the link to a, a form where you can uh, input your question and uh, we'll take a quick look at that after um, we answer any board questions or hear any board comments. Um, anything from the board this week that you'd like to uh, ask Brian or anything you'd like to point out common, Marikita? Yeah, I just want to, you know, that we, we um, tend to focus as we get towards the end of this uh, process on the revenue side, because that's the side that drives the cost side, um, certainly. So um, I just want to encourage people who are wondering kind of where all that money is going. There's lots of data in previous board meetings where we go over the specific categories and, and different investments we're making in different areas where we're uh, where we're managing costs differently going forward, um, which is what kind of we're using this revenue for. So um, I just want to make sure we get kind of if people are wondering where the where the other side of the equation is, is we went over it several times in various different board meetings, and you can certainly go back and and take a look through those to really get a feel for for where that that money is being spent. Thank you. Um, any, oh, Judy, sorry. Um, I, I just wanted to point out that um, the amount of discretionary funding of, sorry, of discretionary spending that is included in this budget is extremely minimal uh, to the point that something approximating over 97% of the budget is for mandatory expenses um, that includes the personnel and, and uh, special ed and legal and uh, insurance costs um, and, and other things that just we absolutely have to cover. And so the amount that the budget is going up and the non-discretionary um, costs that, that we are incurring here is, is something un, well under 1%. Um, I, I think it's actually closer to half a percent. Uh, I don't remember the exact figure at the moment, but um, it's just really remarkable to me how tight a budget this is. Um, and yet nothing is being cut. All services are being maintained. Um, and, and I appreciate all the hard work that went into creating that um, for the district. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have anything before we move on? Okay, well, thank you very much, Brian. Um, thank you. We will talk a little bit more about it um, next meeting before we get to uh, the actual vote. Absolutely. Um, let's take a quick look, see if anything has, we have no community questions at this time. So, but um, again, as always, if anyone thinks of something at you know, a later time, you always feel free at any time to either reach out to the administrators or reach out to the board through our email addresses. And we're happy to uh, respond to you. Um, so that now moves us on to, um, the consent portion of the agenda, but we're going to break out a few of these things um, separately. So um, I'll turn it over to you, Victoria. I'm going to start with the. Yes, thank you. Yep. Um, I'd like to um, ask the boards. Well, do you want to do the separate one first, Alec, or or do the? Well, we have several. Why don't we start? Why don't we start with the people, though? Why don't we start with G one through seven? Okay, I'd like to ask the board's approval of the tenure appointments for the teachers uh, listed in G one through seven. Do I have a motion to approve? Pamela, do I have a second? Nilesh, um, all in favor? We are enthusiastically approved. Congratulations again to all of the tenure candidates. Um, and we are so very happy to have you with us and to have our hooks into you firmly now. So. 
Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, if we could take, I guess if we can take the other separate ones first and then we'll put the, the rest in a block at the end, if that's all right. Okay, I'd like um, to ask the board's approval of G9. Um, and I will, uh, would you like me to read the resolution, Alec, for each one? Um, or just a, just G9 would be fine. Board's yeah, approval of G, yep. item G9. Do I have a motion to approve um, G9? Mariquita, I have a second. Nuresh, all in favor? Okay, we are approved with some abstentions, which we'll get to Rosemary. Um, okay. Um, next up, maybe why don't we take um, I-9. Um, I'd like to ask the board's approval of item I-8. Oh, sorry. Alec, or, I may have the outdated agenda. Let me take a look real quick, right? Let me refresh because I know there was one addition that and you, may have gone on after I um, printed mine. No, it might. Um, uh, yes. I think I-8 is correct. I-8, I-8 is the- I-8. Yep. That's the board's approval of I-8. Do I have a motion to approve? Mariquita, have a second. Noash, all in favor? Uh, once again, it passes with some abstentions, which we will get to, Rosemary. Um, then I believe we need to do I, I'm sure the number is still right. Yeah, I three and four is roll call votes. Yes, that is correct. Um, we'll begin with I three. Um, we have a motion to approve, no less. Do we have a second? Um, Mariquita, all right, I will, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go by my position on my screen. Um, Mariquita? Yes. Uh, I say yes. Jennifer? Yes. Uh, Judy? Yes. Pamela? Yes. No ash? Yes. Monica? Yes. All right, that is approved. Thank you. Um, do I have a motion to approve uh, I-4? Uh, Nilesh, second, Jennifer. All right, Mariquita? Sure. <laughs> I approve. Uh, Jennifer? Yes. Uh, Judy? Yes. Pamela? Yes. Nilesh? Yes. And Monica? Yes. Thank you. That's approved. And uh, I guess we can take... Is there anything else anyone wants taken separately or wants to have a chance to comment on or ask questions before we take the rest as a block? Okay. Alec, are, are, aren't we supposed to be adopting the budget tonight? Yes, that's- That's part of this. Um, I mean, that, do, you, do you want to take that one separately? That, that is part oh, of- Oh no, I, all right, I see it now. Yeah, I only looked at it three times so and missed it. Yeah, no, it's, yes, <laughs> Never mind. I'm, I'm tired you. right now. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you for asking. That would be bad to miss that one. <laughs> would you like to take that separately? Sure. Let's go ahead. Yes. I'd um, like to ask the board's approval of business I-1, adoption of the administrative budget proposal for 21-22. I-2. It's I-2. Uh, no. It's F-2. I too is the property tax report card. Yeah. It's it's F two. I don't know what. No, that F2, was, that was no, the, I I one. That was the superintendent's report item. The actual vote. Refresh item. your screen. No, no, he's he's looking at the adoption under the superintendent's report. That was just the discussion of it. Oh. The actual item that we vote on is um, I one. I won the adoption of the administrative budget proposal for 21-22. Mariquita, second Nilesh. All in favor? It is approved, thank you. Alec, while we're at this pulling it out, we might as well do I2 as well. Sure. 
on a roll here. Um, okay. I'm going to ask. Has the board have... approval of approval of the real property tax report card? Sure. I have a motion approved. Uh, Jennifer, second Pamela, all in favor? It is approved. With great appreciation to Brian for yes. completing his first budget successfully and with with great skill and with uh, able to support all of our various myriad of questions and such. So thank you very much for all of your great work and congratulations on getting through your first budget. <laughs> thank you, Mary. Yeah, again, uh, I, I've said it before, I think um, the, the support everyone's provided throughout the process from the teachers who, who really drive the budget and, and the students um, to Sue's guidance through this process. I, I couldn't be more thankful for the help. So thank you all. Thank you. Um, all right, I think we still have a few more that we yes, can put um, together. I do. So I'd like to ask the board's approval of G personnel number eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And, and also I business numbers five through five, six, seven, nine, and 10. Okay, I'm motion with Pamela, second Judy, all in favor. They are approved. Thank you all very much. Um, Thank you, those who are watching for attending. Congratulations again to all of our teachers who have attained tenure. That's a wonderful milestone. Um, our next meeting, as Brian mentioned, is on May 11th. That will be the last meeting before the actual vote on the budget and the bond and on the board candidates. Um, so again, please feel free to you know, send us questions before then, please, you know, take time to look at the bond page and the budget sections on the district website to educate yourselves. But to the extent that, you know, doesn't answer everything, then please tune in on May 11th so that we can uh, get it all answered and fresh in your mind before you make your decisions on May 18th. Um, and with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? Marikita, second Pamela, all in favor, we are adjourned. Thank you all very much and have a great evening.